Hi everyone and welcome to this Mother's Day edition of The Crow Show, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Together we send a very special cheerio to all the mothers out there. During today's show we'll hear from some of the players about their own mums. She's super caring and, and super nice, really looks after me so I can't thank her enough. But first, how talented can one young man be? Alex Keith was in the unique position over summer when he held professional contracts for both football and cricket. What makes his story even more remarkable is he hadn't played football for six years. As a 17 year old, Alex was a super talented player, pre-listed by the Gold Coast Suns. But he turned his back on the sport to pursue an equally promising cricket career with the Victorian Bush Rangers. Last summer, he moved to Adelaide and joined the Adelaide Strikers in the Big Bash. But late last year, he decided to return to football, signing on with the Crows as a rookie. Now 24, Alex has already debuted in the Sand. I had a fair bit of catching up to do with the, um, the pre-season training that I missed and yeah, obviously running a few laps while the, while the boys were playing games and whatnot during the first few rounds of the season. So I was really excited to get out, get out and play and pull on the, on the jumper for the first time. highlight to sing the song after the game with Paul Hunter who was, was playing his first game as well and yeah we, we were roommates so that was that was pretty special. In the under 17s I, I was part of the AIS program and um, I actually played with Kyle Hardigan who's at the Crows and he's been a pretty good mentor for me while I've, while I've been here so yeah I was also playing, playing cricket at, at that stage and really enjoyed playing both sports. I get asked if it was a difficult decision but I was, I was pretty lucky to have the opportunity to you know have a professional cricket position at the Victorian Bush Rangers so yeah I was, I was wrapped once I got that opportunity and from there I, I wanted to try and um, you know give it my all. I don't think I really ever contemplated um, returning to footy until it became clear that I'd given everything to cricket. The recruiting staff at, at Adelaide got, um, you know, presented me with this opportunity. Really glad that um, you know, I've given it a go and I'm yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens. Joseph just sits it up, really didn't give his forwards too much of a chance and Alex Keith takes a strong mark. It's been a pretty steep learning curve, probably getting used to all the um, knocks and bumps that you you don't get after 90 overs in the field um, playing cricket, so um, that's yeah, that's that's been one challenge. But I think yeah, all all facets of the game, um, to be honest, are pretty challenging. But yeah, got a lot to learn. I was happy with how, how I played. I um I made some mistakes, but I'm I'm pretty prepared that you know I'm gonna stuff up a few things, and I'm just hoping that I'll be able to learn pretty quickly. The club's latest eye-catching television advertisement brings to life the popular catch cry, We Fly As One, and feedback so far has been positive. Now we'll give you a behind the scenes look at what went into making the commercial. Frank Pangallo reports. The club's theme is We Fly As One, and it's captured with stunning Hollywood-style effects as the birds swarm into images of star players Rory Sloan, Tex Walker, and the inimitable Nimble Crow's favourite, Eddie Betts. We wanted to tell a tale of a crow out in the far reaches of South Australia making its way into the stadium, and along the way brought all of the other crows in South Australia. The crows are all about bravery, they're all about courage, they're all about taking risks um, and, and coming together as one, flying as one. And ultimately this idea is a great visual expression of that. The concept began with Andy Scott from Show Pony Advertising. It was then handballed to Matt Byrne, the executive producer at Kojo, the innovative Adelaide production company at Kent Town. For us it was the opportunity to meet the, the creative challenge, that uh, this was something new, something we hadn't done before. We started studying uh, bird behaviours and looking at murmurations and these amazing starlings that twist and turn and create patterns in the sky, we just, we saw that and thought this is our idea, this is where it goes. So the first thing we did is film the players doing exactly what we wanted them to do. We wanted to capture their mannerisms, the way they moved. We did everything we could to make sure things were to scale, that the birds moved as birds would do. There are more than 40,000 birds in those computer-generated scenes. 
It's all maths. It's all making the birds not collide with one another. The eddy flying over the Adelaide Oval is, is the crescendo of, of, of the advertisement where you can really see that the, the murmuration of the crows and all the elements coming together. After the break, Alana explores how 50,000 fans get to the Adelaide Oval. And we recall the day Matthew Robran really showed his class. Uh, my mum's name's Mandy and uh, she's great. She just, uh, I'm a bit of a mummy's boy, so um, no, she's always given me a lot of support and a lot of love growing up, so couldn't ask for a better mum. back. Every weekend 50,000 people descend on Adelaide Oval. They come from across the metropolitan area and widely scattered parts of the state by train, bus, car and tram. Some ride bikes, others simply walk. By any measure it's a huge logistical exercise and transport authorities have the responsibility of ensuring fans get there safely and on time. Yeah, to get 50,000 people into Adelaide Oval, uh, it's a bit of a challenge, uh, but we've done it really well over the, the last three years. Um, obviously public transport, uh, the Oval being right in the city of Adelaide, really helps. We've got about 50% of the people that come to the Oval use uh, public transport for an AFL game. Uh, I've been on the train once or twice when I go from a different area, but usually from home, catch the tram. We got here by a train. We caught the bus from uh, McGill. It's quick and it's easy and you don't have to pay because you're a member, so it's great. So on average, for Crows games, we tend to get about 10,300 people on buses, we tend to get about 11,400 on our trains and just under 3,000 on average uh, on our trams. So that's how we get to you know, roughly about 24,000, 25,000 uh, people out of an average 50,000 crowd for uh, Crows games at Adelaide Oval. And we came, we left the car at Mawson Lakes and we drive and then we catch the train and then we go across the road for a couple of drinks and then we go to the game. Uh, we get at least half the people going to the Oval travelling over the footbridge. It's a little over 300 metres, so it's, it's quite a short distance. And when you compare other city stadiums like the MCG, for example, having Adelaide Oval so close to the city means it's really easy for people to get from really anywhere in the city just over to the Oval. Dual Premiership player Matthew Robran played 130 games for the Crows over 10 years. Playing at centre-half forward, his career-best six-goal haul was in the 98 preliminary final against the Bulldogs. And his performance capped off a huge win, catapulting the team into the grand final against North Melbourne. I guess a preliminary final, regardless of who you're going to play, is going to be big, considering you're only one game away from a grand final. But um, certainly because we played the Bulldogs the year before um, and just scraped over the line, um, you know, there was a, certainly a huge expectation around the place that, uh, that we were good enough to do it again. And uh, unfortunately, on the day, we were good enough to make the grand final. Touches, missed his opportunities early. This is a big kick. We were lucky enough to get on to, certainly I was lucky enough to get on the end of some great passes from the boys up the field and the last one of the game was just a, a nice kick that I was on the lead and Bix passed it to me and uh, I think it, I kicked it, it might have been from 55 or metres and went through so I think when goals like that go through you, you perhaps think things are going to fall your way on the day so that was a, a great goal that stands out. It kicks from about 55, the man behind him is too close, he's too close. It was certainly a, a strength of the side throughout the whole final series uh, that year was the contributions from everybody. Um, and for me personally, the year before uh, in the preliminary final of 97 against the Doggies, I was terrible and sat the second half on the pine. So to play a significant role and, and contribute to the result was something that I was really pleased with. It certainly would have been for players like Rue and Peter Vardy who both missed out the year before with, uh, with injury. It was a little bit of icing on the cake that you had six players who didn't play the previous year that were able to experience the thrill of winning a grand final that year. 
worth remembering that Matthew was involved in the Crows' first ever game in 1991, but he lined up instead for Hawthorne in what was his AFL debut. Last week's game against Fremantle enabled the Crows to host their first group of special footy fans under a new program designed to help the disabled. Attending any major community event is often simply too hard for those with a disability. Now, the AFL For Me program provides reserved seating in easily accessible areas of Adelaide Oval and the Crows are delighted to be on board. AFL For Me is a program that allows everybody basically to come and access something that they wouldn't be able to do because one, their families don't have the money and two, they'd never be able to get up into the corporate box. They were super excited. Crows are a fantastic supporter of the program. You know, their guys are only too happy to come up here and mix with our guys and sign autographs and support our guys really well. It's great to see some, some young kids coming from pretty remote areas to come watch some footy and uh, they're loving it actually. So This is the first time obviously we've done it this year but there's going to be uh, you know many more occasions throughout the year where we do this similar sort of setup. It's one of the, the great things the footy club we're able to get behind and then when you see they come to fruition on a day like today and see the smile on the kids' faces, it uh, makes it all worthwhile. One of my boys there, Alex, he got his clothes prepared and got his whole uniform out two days before he actually knew he was coming. Eddie Betts is the favourite player getting around for a change so I think uh, there's one with there, number 18 on his back over here and uh, very excited so hopefully Eddie kicks a couple of goals this quarter for them. What a wonderful initiative, well done to everyone involved. Still to come, some home truths from two former housemates and body talk, the importance of the pre-game warm-up. Karen? is my mum's name and um, just because, well, typical mum stuff, cared for me, raised me and uh, used to do all the motherly things, so food and cleaning up after myself. Atkins has had a good start to the year with his running carry from the wing. But one of his biggest off-field challenges has been coming up against his old housemate, Brody Smith. Thanks to Aussie Ripper Roast, we gave Smithers the job of finding out a little more about the man they call the rat. Rory the Rat Atkins, thanks for joining us this week on Ripper Roast. Thanks for having me, mate. Now, um, you're into your fourth year of footy at the club and um, played some good footy last year and in the side this year playing well. What have you put your improvement down to in the last 12 months? I've put it down to maturing as a person and a player. Also, having a full pre-season this year definitely helped, feeling a lot fitter and stronger. You're obviously feeling pretty confident on the field. You had the yellow and pink boots out on the weekend. So, uh, how's it all going this year? Feeling pretty good? Well, um... I give Puma a little plug here, they supply me <laughs> with my footwear, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, well, they sent out a pair of boots and said we'd like you to wear them, so I wore them and they went well. So if you're looking for a pair of boots, get on board. <laughs> yeah, but yellow and pink, one's yellow, one's pink. Oh, I, don't, I don't design it, mate, so <laughs> you know, just wear you can't them. come to me, I'll just wear them. Now, um, you're living with uh, Josh Jenkins, obviously a downgrade from your previous housemate. Myself. I think I needed a change from where I was living, you know. The, <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't really a uh, senior figure in the household and um, no one was setting a good example so I had to move out of there. Has your cooking improved? You made a roast when I, you were at mine and it walked out of the oven onto the plate. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thanks for that mate, thanks for the support. Um, that was my first attempt of a roast and we did get two good slices out of it until it was purple, but I think it's improved a little bit. Yeah. Well I did ask Josh and we, Hannah, here, here and um, there was a story about you were trying to boil some eggs. Oh yeah, I've never boiled an egg before and I just asked how do I, like what do I do, that was it. And you just chuck it in the water? Yeah, but the, I did it first and it <laughs> cracked, so like I chuck, dropped it in there and it cracked, so I was like, I'm not too sure how to work well, it. I, now, now I know you need to like put it in with a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I just... <laughs> Alright, uh, the rat, thanks for joining us this week on Ripper Roast. No worries, thanks for having me. <laughs> Lol. For most players, game day preparation begins at least two or three hours before the first bounce. Critical to their routine is making sure the body is in the best possible shape for the rigours that lie ahead. 
thorough warming up is essential and recovery after the game is just as important. That's what we discover in Under the Coach's Roof, brought to you by Revolution Roofing. The body is obviously really important for an elite athlete. I mean, in the end, it's the uh, it's the, the vehicle that drives them to uh, to perform. On a game day, their warm up will consist of as soon as they get into the into the rooms. Uh, generally, most of the guys start some stretching. Um, you know, each person sort of has their own routine which they, they go through. From a uh, an official point of view, they start a, a warm up about 50 minutes before the game. They do down to some mobility, which is really active, really dynamic. Get the guys sort of get moving as a group. The important part of a warm up is that you're preparing to do what you're about to do. So you've really got to get up to almost full speed and, and be ready to go by the time that warm-up finishes to be uh, to be ready to compete. As soon as that game's finished, they're almost always thinking about the week after, um, especially on a short break. You know, sometimes you've only got six days between games. It's really important that the guys start, you know, regenerating and recovering their body then. The main thing for us is food, uh, food and drink. You know, as soon as we can after the game, the players are getting in some, some protein uh, through their, their shakes, uh, some food, and generally just then it's whatever they can stomach. And with recovery, you know, there's, there's a lot of science out there about it, but sometimes it's just what works for the, the individual as much as for everyone. The last one, and, and we're really really big on this as well is sleep, making sure that the guys get as good a sleep as possible uh, after a game. Stay with us. Shortly, we'll go on a holiday much, much closer to home. And check out if you are our face in the crowd. My mum's name's Melissa and uh, she just is super caring and, and super nice, really looks after me, so I can't thank her enough. So far this year, players have taken us to some fairly exotic holiday destinations, thanks to our friends at Flight Centre. But Mitch Griggs' travel plans are usually a lot more modest. His favourite place to get away and relax is his grandparents' dairy farm in Victoria. My favourite holiday destination would have to be my uh, grandparents' dairy farm in uh, Lane Gather in the Victoria Gippsland. Um, just uh, obviously love spending time with the family, but um, it's just really quiet and um, you know, I've always loved the country lifestyle, so it um, really, really you know, helps me relax and chill out and ride around in the quaddy and do a bit of tractor work and get up early in the morning and milk the cows. And it's a pretty, pretty nice scenery when you get up at five in the morning and the sun is just coming up. So um, yeah, I really love getting up there. I've only been to really Phuket and Bali before. Um, overseas and I think the next trip I'd love to do would be um, somewhere where, the, where there's snow. Um, never been to the snow so it's definitely a place I'd love to go. Um, obviously America and Europe, you know, they're up there as well but I think the snow is probably the next one for me. Now we should remind you about the Adelaide Crows official seat return program. If you're not able to attend a particular game, you can make your ticket available for someone else to buy. If your ticket sells, the money will be paid directly into your nominated bank account. It's a convenient way to recoup some cash while allowing another Crows fan to enjoy a game. For more details, head to the website on your screen. Each week we like to pick out a face in the crowd and give them the opportunity to win a merchandise pack courtesy of Chemist Warehouse. So if this is you, make sure you contact the club via email before 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and the prize will be yours. Looking ahead to next week's show, Brett Burton takes us back to an emotional night. That's when he, Andrew McLeod, Simon Goodwin and Trent Henschel all farewelled a packed Amy Stadium. And Brodie Smith roasts defender Jake Lever about his unfortunate habit of hurting his own players in marking contests. That wraps up our special Mother's Day show, thanks to Chemist Warehouse. We look forward to your company again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Bye for now. Bye.